New controller, new wire, new me. No more disconnects. Welcome back to Riverside Royals Dynasty here on NCAA 14 College Football Revamped. And today we're going to play Florida State. We got home field advantage, and they're only 4-3. and three. However, they're playing much tougher competition. I'm going to guess they're a significantly higher overall than that, than we are. And they are. 86 overall, though not incredible. Still pretty good, at least compared to where we are. Now, I need Florida State to lose in real life, as that is pretty much the only way that it seems that Texas can get in to the college football playoff. That's what I care about right now. That's where I am. But uh, here in Riverside Royals Dynasty, we have a very interesting couple of things. So we have visits scheduled for a number of different players. And as you might notice, we are already to week 10, meaning we have guys like Linwood Tapley coming in to visit. We have multiple bonuses if we're able to accomplish some of these goals. Alex Ture also visiting. And this would be a massive recruitment to lock up. We'd get a ton of points back, 400 if he ends up committing sometime in the very near future. And we've offered him a scholarship already. He seems to like the idea of becoming a Riverside Royal. And perhaps with a huge upset win of Florida State today, we can actually lock up some recruitments. So that's the big time goal for today. We're going to hop in, see if we can't pull off the big time upset and defeat the Seminoles. Again, much like I need Louisville to do uh, here conference championship week in real life. We'll see what ends up happening. I feel like Texas is going to get screwed. Um, I don't think they're going to get in. I hope that I'm wrong. But when you're banking pretty much everything on Florida State losing, I know they don't have a quarterback right now. Jordan Travis is hurt. But it's just, even if that's a 50-50, it's still not tremendous odds. And then who knows what happens if Georgia loses to Alabama, which I don't expect to happen, but it certainly could. Washington and Oregon cancel out. One of those teams is getting in either way. And then with Michigan, if Michigan loses to Iowa, which I'd be shell-shocked if that happened. I don't know what happens at that point, but that would be extremely surprising considering Iowa just can't score any points. But that's neither here nor there. What we care about right now is the Riverside Royals. But you know what? If you're interested in some picks on Underdog for college football and Sunday, here they are. This video is sponsored by Underdog Fantasy. If you live in one of these yellow states or just currently there, you can play Pick'em, which is my favorite way to play daily fantasy sports. When you use code BANGLE, they'll match your first time deposit up to $100, meaning if you put down $100, they will give you $100 free to play with. And these are my picks for tonight and tomorrow for college football. Dylan Johnson, lower 19 fantasy points. Alan Bowman, lower 15 fantasy points. I just don't think he's going to throw for very many passing touchdowns, which is a big part of fantasy points. Now, could be a little bit risky because Texas uh, is susceptible to giving up yards through the air, but I think it's going to be a lot of Ollie Gordon or at least attempts tomorrow. And I don't think he's going to go over 103 and a half either. So you could also take that. Jaden Blue, higher 30 and a half rushing yards. He's the second back at Texas. He had a big game last week going for over 120. I was in attendance. Looked pretty good. I think he's earned some more touches. And with, you know, CJ Baxter being injured a little bit, might see a little bit more Jaden Blue, even though we expect to see a handful uh, or a lot of CJ Baxter. Daquan Finn, Toledo quarterback at a uh, or versus a very good Miami of Ohio passing defense. And he's been up and down, had some big games, but... I think the matchup's pretty good, and he's typically a guy that is lower than this, uh, given the matchup, so I'm rocking with it. And then, of course, one of the best players in college football that you've probably never heard of. I think he was the Mountain West Offensive Player of the Year. I like this number at 77 and a half rushing yards. Now, obviously a threat to catch the football as well if you look at his game versus Air Force, but runs the football a lot, and uh, he pretty much is the lead back in terms of talent compared to, uh, what, Halani. And if you're not into college football, I also have an NFL three-man here. Bryce Young, higher 192 and a half passing yards. I know people are not going to like to take Bryce Young here, but the matchup is incredible. The Bucks have one of the worst passing defenses in the NFL, so I'm just playing the matchup. And I'm doing more of the same with Brock Purdy against the Eagles, who allow a lot of passing yards. It's a tough team to run on, and if you want to get the hands 
or the, you know, the hands of Christian McCaffrey on the football, you're going to throw it to him against the Eagles, I think. So I like Brock Purdy here, Ayuk as well to have a pretty good game. And then Devin Singletary, higher 10.65 fantasy points. I think that number is going to go way up. I think it's set way too low against the Broncos defense that allows a lot of rushing yards. James Cook dominated them as well. And Devin Singletary coming off a not so great game, only a, a handful of touches for not many yards. I think this is a big bounce back spot against a very, very bad run defense. Thank you to Underdog for sponsoring this portion of the video. Use code BENGAL. Get a deposit match up to $100. So hopefully you guys can make a little bit of money with the sponsor of today's video, Underdog Fantasy. Use code BENGAL. Please, I will love you forever. Here is the kick and we are underway against FSU. They don't know what it's like to walk into our kingdom and play the Riverside Royals. They are in for a rude awakening. And that might be a player that we might be in for a rude awakening against. Pat Butler, their senior running back, fresh off a very big performance. And we've struggled against running backs this season, also quarterbacks and receivers, and uh, any position you can really think of as the quarterback Michael Walker is going to take off for 25, nope, not even close, 21 yards to start. I got my hash wrong, but that's okay. Oh, quarterback keeper, Smith trying to make the tackle, can't do it, Wilkerson ends up wrapping him up. I don't know how we're going to stop Florida State today, I'm still trying to figure that out. It's still early, you know, they're capable of, of driving down the field easily the first time, okay? But we're going to react well, we're going to make the necessary adjustments, and we're going to stop that from happening in the future. How about a takeaway? They're going deep, and Smith cannot keep up with Pat Butler. It's just a lack of speed. I feel like we were in the right position, but it's not the right matchup. Linebacker on the running back, they found the mismatch, and they exploited it. Pat Butler, who I thought might hurt us on the ground, ends up hurting us through the air. And FSU's got the early 7-0 lead as UCF has beat number two Oklahoma State. Oklahoma State, who Texas is playing in the Big 12 Championship tomorrow as I record this, and tomorrow as you watch this, if you're watching this when it comes out on Friday, uh, UCF did beat Oklahoma State already this year, and it was not close. It was, I think, 45-3. to Dominant victory. But let's see what the offense is capable of. We know we like to keep the football on the ground. In regards to the end of the last episode with the knees, um, not going to talk about it. Second and five. Here's another handoff to Jones. You just, you, especially when you're a bad team, you can't play not to lose. You have to play to win, and I played not to lose. That's what it was. Needed to play to win, and we might actually take off here. It's a screen, but we're just going to take it with the quarterback, and look at Dan Sims go! I'm sure I've done that before, but it's certainly not often that that happens, as Jones almost sets up a block on uh, Dan Sims instead of for him, but obviously was expecting the football, didn't really expect the run. But when we have a quarterback like Dan Sims, who is pretty incapable of playing the position, Sometimes you just choose to run when you're not confident he can make that throw and put it in a good spot. And that is nearly intercepted. Just trying to do too much. Now, I'm worried about that slot defender. We're going to bring Ewing over to hopefully take him away. We're going to go read option. And it is just the perfect play call. I absolutely love it. And I don't think I used to ever do this when I would call read option with uh, two running backs. Is motioning the far right one not part of the actual option and getting him as a lead blocker to take out the nickel it's amazing quick throw to jones and that's what i'm talking about that's why we run in those spots fourth and three certainly not gonna punt we're just not a punting team we're gonna figure out a play where we can find success and i like something with a mesh concept and then you know maybe we can uh roll out and run scramble for it if we need to and we're just sacked. Ball comes loose, recovered by FSU. It didn't matter after the sack as long as they didn't return it very far. It uh, it uh, would appear we didn't do much in the way of blocking on that play. Here's first down, maybe a touchdown. Murphy saves a touchdown for now. We're, we are outmatched. That much is apparent already. 
We are outmatched. I don't know how we're going to get a stop on this team today. <laughs> I just don't know how it's going to happen. Whether they start on their own five, which won't happen, or, you know, R25, I think they can pretty much go down the field however and whenever they want. It's just they're way better, way faster, way stronger. We can't compete. I hate to be so negative, but we pretty much can't compete. That's a nice play, though. At least somebody wants to make it. And he's injured! We have a chance! Let's go! Chris Hood! Big time injury. Probably uh, put 100 bucks in his locker after the game. Here's second and goal. 12 comes across the formation. Is this a screen? Wow, oh, something was weird. Tyler Williams, touchdown. Good throw from the quarterback. I don't know what's happening. We're just watching the ball skate across the field. Defying the laws of physics. They're going to review it, but it's going to be a touchdown. Let's take a look at those feet. Oh, the right foot actually looks like it came down out of bounds. That might be coming back. And they actually end up reversing it. And that's going to be an incomplete pass. Okay, so still 7-0. Third and goal. If we can get a stop here... We'll keep it to just a 10-point game. Now, I don't like what they're doing. I Nobody's covering Bailey. It's read option. Walker breaks a tackle. Touchdown. <laughs> we just can't. We, we're not as good. Even when we're in position, we're not because we can't tackle. Brutal. Mike Norvell looking a little bit different. Got to remember, though, FSU started with the football. If we can somehow... You know, take time off the clock, score a touchdown. You know, we get the football to start the second half. So we're not completely out of it, just mostly out of it. Butler strained Peck in a miss of the next two weeks. So he's out of the game. We're under pressure. They're going to close down. Now, the biggest problem with having absolutely no defense, as we find Jones for four yards, and he's going to be short is that for the defensive back visits today for our recruits, we're going to have absolutely no chance to complete our goals because we are incapable of making a play in coverage. So they're not letting me motion Johnson over. Finally, they do late. We're going to have to snap this football. And it's going to be a read option. We're going to keep it with Sims, and that's a first down. We got hyper-aggressive, but listen, we have almost no chance to win this game already. Punting the football back and, and letting them get 21 up on us, that's not going to be the way to do it. So we're going to be hyper stupid aggressive in order to try and stay in this game. It pays off that time. All right, that's going to be the end of the first quarter. Starting to get a little bit of a drive going here. It's third and three. I like the idea of read option. Bring the fullback over and then make the right read. Safety's coming up. It's not really letting, or letting me motion Holmes over until the last second. We're actually just going to give this to the back. Jones, he is shut down. Quarterback keep could have been smarter. I don't know if I'm going to go back to read option here. Obviously, we're not going to punt in this spot. It, it's just, it's stupid. It is a stupid idea to punt on fourth and two. We might go back to it. We might go back to it because I think it's just our highest probability play. We'll see if that does anything. Come on. Make the right read. Quarterback keep, Sims keeps it, gets the first down. I thought there was a really good chance he was going to get tackled there for a loss, but ends up getting just enough space to convert. The read option is just the best way to move the football here when you're a really, really bad team. And uh, I, I use it as a crutch, but kind of have to when that stuff happens. Play action, linebackers don't bite on it. We're looking to run. We're going to throw it, lob it up, and nothing's there. Third and 13 is going to be very difficult to convert. Our best option is probably settling for fourth and short and throwing the in to Jones. And honestly, it's a bullet. It's right on him. The coverage was just too good. Now, the drag was wide open. I just wonder if we throw this, if, if we end up turning up the field enough. It's quite possible, but if we throw it like here, like I would have... These guys would have turned around, and then I think we're still short. I think we tried to get as much as we could, but just great coverage. And now I think we do have to punt. Although, I said we wouldn't pin them on their own five. Oh, we're not going to. 
Okay, yeah, never mind. Never, whatever I was going to say, don't even worry about it. Ah, it's going to be a big play. Yep, there goes McFarland. Dwayne Wade is terrible. 62-yard touchdown for Jeremy McFarland. Quarterback's three for three for over 100 yards now. Third and three. Read option. Quarterback keep falling. And short. We're going to go for it because we're down 21. Um, these good teams just defend read option better than I'd like. It's tough when they bring a lot of guys. Here's fourth and two. Safety's creeping up. Looks like there's a blitz. We're trying to get it to Johnson, and there he goes. Clarence Johnson doesn't make a ton of catches for us because no one does except for the running back, Troy Jones. But when he does catch the ball, I feel like they're usually good plays. A guy I might want to try to target a little bit more. Here's first and 10. Going to check down. Take three, I guess. It's like a bad run or a slightly less than preferred run. Slant open. Antoine Davis can't catch it. That's our best receiver. You wouldn't know it. Although maybe you would because they're all terrible. So what does the best terrible one even look like? You know what I mean? Third and seven. Going back to Antoine Davis. Why would I even bother? Why would I bother? We'll punt, I guess. It's fourth and seven. I don't know. I don't know anything anymore. It's an okay punt, I guess. Better than the last one. I think the best thing we can do is keep blitzing and then play option defense to play the quarterback and then hopefully make some plays. So, it uh, didn't end up working here. That was an option. And it just didn't, we didn't defend it that well. Like, we got to the quarterback. He just was able to pitch the ball. So, what I'm going to do when we're reading the quarterback on these option plays, because they've been running quite a lot of them, I'm just going to take care of the running back, try to make a play to the outside, and then if we make plays like that on the inside before the quarterback's ready to pitch the ball, we're going to be able to make some plays. Lamar Simmons there brings down the quarterback, Michael Walker, and we need to do that a little bit more. But they're snapping the ball before I'm kind of like ready a lot. And I don't love that. Here's second 11, but it's not exclusively read option, right? So it's tough to defend anything. That's another touchdown. It's going to be 28-0 Florida State. Man, but look at all those fans in the stands. Not happy with the Royals. What is the game plan at this point? You know, I'm not, I'm not entirely sure. And I honestly think this game looks a little bit different if we were able to execute and make the plays that you expect your guys to make. Antoine Davis has two huge drops. Really no way around that. And I don't know what where that even puts us, right? We're, we're throwing the ball in that spot. Kind of feel like we have to. But nobody gets open. It's third and 17. FSU actually calling timeouts. Yeah, this game, oh man, not decided yet. You're going to need another possession for sure. Throw on the run. That's a nice catch by Stephen Jones. Second timeout by FSU. You know what would be really cool? Just one interception. Just one. That would be awesome. I doubt that it's going to happen. Now, we still get points for the recruit just for visiting. And how could you not looking at this electric atmosphere? We're going to go deep. Touchdown. <laughs> Mike Ford, Yankees legend. Yeah. I, what do you do? At some point, it just comes down to the fact that they are just better. I'd love to score a point. That would be cool. I know you can't even do that. Unless... There is a way. There is a way. If you were to get safetyed on the two-point conversion attempt. But uh, that's pretty niche. I don't know how you'd be... You'd have to lose 100 yards, essentially. And that would be fairly difficult to do. That's what we have to do with these punts. Yeah, we have to let them bounce. Oh, my goodness. Game breaker. Game changer. All right, we're down 35 nothing. That's halftime. Use code BANGLE on UNDERDOG. You'll get a deposit match up to $100.
on your first time deposit and hopefully you're able to win some money and if you bet on this game you would have been able to pick any florida state higher or over and you win oh boy am i excited for the second half you know what the stands actually look a little bit more full and the football's on the ground go home if you came to watch riverside go home and we'll start the second half on defense down 35 nothing florida state gets the ball oh in a pretty good spot and make it even better after a run as jeremy mcfarland is averaging nearly 30 yards per carry but i'll tell you you can see their unwavering support gotta appreciate that band there in the uh the end zone McFarland kills his yards per carry number still probably around 20 and gets a touchdown fans hyped up though quick throw out to Jones big stiff arm oh you love the energy down 42 in the third quarter third and one wide receiver screen is going to work to perfection it did not it did not now at first i was going to eat the throw just maybe scramble or throw it away and then i thought he got more space i'm like i'm going to throw it and then he lost all the space because he's really terribly slow and we get picked off by a white corner i'm deleting the game although we could potentially allow under 200 yards passing depending on how the rest of this game goes oh that was nearly a nice play nearly had it nearly had it Instead, it's another Jeremy McFarland touchdown. And we were so close. Two for 11 on third down. This will likely be the final play of the third quarter. If I have anything to say about it. And I do, because Ewing actually catches the football. Had so many drops today. Not him, uh, but like just the team in general. That's the final play of the third quarter. Dan Sims approaching 100 yards passing. And you know what? It's not over yet. We'll see what happens. Could be a big fourth quarter for us. Just just you wait. Plenty of open space for a run here. Football comes out, recovered by Holland. I mean, there did appear to be space. It just got closed down incredibly quickly. And what is Dan Sims going to do? Not fumble? What have you ever seen a Riverside Royals game? The football is going on the ground. That's for sure. Now, we're not covering any of these players. A pass could be huge here, and they just hit the check down. But with the yards after catch, they're still able to pick up 15. Blitzing! Murphy got there, but couldn't get there in time. And the running back is just throwing off every would-be tackler. The 28-yard touchdown by Jeremy McFarland, and Michael Walker's now right at 200 yards passing. So, that sucks. Would have been nice if anyone could have made those tackles. And you know what it is? It's remarkable that he was so strong that all of those hits just didn't even knock him even an inch to the side out of bounds. He just tiptoed down the sideline, punching Riverside Royals players in the face as they tried to come in and tackle him. Looked like a Steven Seagal movie. It's unbelievable. That's wide open. Clarence Johnson, stiff arm. And Clarence Johnson with the big stiffy. Wide open over the middle. Oh my goodness. It's intercepted by Carter. You really can't get a whole lot more open than that. And I'm not really sure you can miss a throw by more than that. That was impressive. After that last completion, Walker has nine attempts for nine completions. Now ten. And four touchdowns. He's having quite the game. He's only had to throw the ball 10 times. And the fact that they're up 56-0 with their starter still in and still throwing upsets me. But, I mean, if they run the ball, it's a touchdown anyway. So it doesn't really matter. McFarland is looking to end this game quickly. Had a wide open lane. He just turned around and sat down. I appreciate that. Somebody showing some sportsmanship. It's a screen. We're not just, We're not going to be able to make the play. I mean, we read it the whole way, just not fast enough. We don't have the speed. That's a great effort from Dwayne Wade. It really is. And that's the name of his game. 
He's a high effort player with basically no skills. You know what's crazy is the crowd is actually getting really loud right now at Riverside. Are they cheering because the game's almost over? I mean, they really did get so loud for a second. And, uh, yeah, I don't know why. We just gave up the middle. I was questionable. Ball came loose, but no, it didn't. And they recovered it anyway. Reviewing it does nothing, and obviously it did, didn't actually come out. And it's another touchdown. Nice. Just about one minute remaining. Oh, there goes Dan Sims. This might be one of the bigger plays of the entire game. We're up to 80 rush yards. Oh my goodness. Wow, what a game. Read option. Not really going to work. It's tough. I know we didn't run the ball a ton today, but it wasn't working enough. We have zero points, right? And um, just couldn't really do enough today. Couldn't really do enough. There's Dan Sims. We might be able to get to 100. Nope, only 15 yards. So we're going to be just shy total rushing. Uh, but that is your ball game. 63 nothing. We held them under 100 or 300 pass yards, so that's something. Get XP for that. You know, just not not our best performance. Could be our worst. I don't know if we've lost this bad before. This was not a good one. We struggled offensively and defensively. I don't even want to look at their stats, dude. It's going to be just too awful to look at. Uh, Troy Jones only averaged 2.3 per carry, if you're wondering why we didn't give it to him more. And his, he had a long of 8. So, other than that, it was 7 for 11. Not amazing. Receiving, Troy Jones, of course, led us in catches. Although, Stephen Jones looked pretty impressive today. Not too far behind. A couple of drops for Jones. Antoine Davis. A couple of drops for him. He sucks. And then defensively, Wesley Price leads in tackles, as he often does, because they're just getting to the secondary easily. But two TFLs for Lamar Simmons and Chris Hood. No sacks, obviously, no picks, no deflections. Uh, we didn't even have an incompletion. It's a bad game. So we did end up getting some recruits to visit, and we got some points, of course, for those as well. We do also have more prospects visiting today. And Justin Lingard is certainly a big one. 75 overall receiver out of Oakland. 90 speed. Nice catching. Great route running. To start, he could end up being a really nice player. He's already got a scholarship offer. He's just moments away from committing, really. So we did get 150 points for that visit for Alex Ture, for example. Obviously didn't meet any of the game goals because, I mean... Do I even have to say it? We suck. We're terrible. But Ture would be a big ad. Looks like a strong safety to me with his size. Wesley Price could slide over to free safety. A lot of these guys that we're signing, or hopefully signing, are instant starters. Almost all of them. Linwood Tapley had a big visit. Got 150 points for that. And we're just continuing to try to pull away. Now, Stanford has taken the lead on Danny Pardula. He visited, looked like, last week. If we can somehow pass for over 250 yards today, that would be huge. Now, we lost 750 last week. Danny Pardula, the quarterback, is slipping away. Our other option is Garrett Geary, who might even be better, and maybe even significantly better at that. And we're at least going to offer him a scholarship. Try to bring him in from Massachusetts. Although, Danny Pardula staying local-ish uh, would be pretty nice. He's choosing either Stanford, Riverside, USC, UCLA. He's all in that, you know, Las, uh, Los Angeles up to that Bay Area. And, uh, yeah, Washington's in the mix, but are they really? Not really. Honestly, we might even just want to bow out of the Pardula sweepstakes and focus on Garrett Geary. That could make a little bit more sense to me right now. I would hate to take him off completely, but right now I just think we're wasting points. So I'm going to take off 500 for now. We can always put them back on before we simulate to the next week. But I just think those those points would be better served elsewhere. And it's probably not on Lingard or Ture, these guys that we already think are going to end up signing with us. 
but maybe a Delando Ross after a big visit could be big. He's already at 500. Linwood Tapley, we can go up to 500, try to get a commitment from him. The hands on Kahi, Kalani, and Oke are questionable at best, but incredible speed, release, route running, all in a good spot. 6'4", 230 with 96 speed. 87 acceleration is okay. He's a nice player. The running back, Torrey Amaro, committed to Nevada, so we are done on him. He was a good player, but he's not as good as the running back we already have committed. The kicker, Holden Holford, to Texas. Hook him. Tim Allen to Duke, so we can remove all these guys from our board. I mean, Ron Mills is terrible. And we'll host some more recruits as we take on Colorado State. They've been very good against us in the past. When we were in the Mountain West, starting this series, you know, probably 70 or 80 episodes ago before the reboot, Colorado State gave us some trouble. Their back was Ajan Vivens. He does not play, is not a guy that has really ever played much college football, yet dominated us. Real guy. Dominated us early on. I know he's no longer there, but I'm still looking for revenge. I hate Colorado State. Here we go. Can we beat Colorado State? We got a better chance of beating them than FSU. I know that. I know that. We're going to try to run the ball a little bit. We tried last week. It didn't really work. Now, actually, we're not going to try to run the ball. We got to pass. Our game goals are passing. We got to pass the ball. We got to pass the ball better than we've ever passed before. Halfback screens. Rollouts. Throws to the running back. We need to pass successfully. We'll see what happens. And for that reason, by the way, I'm going to start with the football. More perceived possessions, maybe, depending on what happens in the first half. Obviously, they would get us to start the second, right? But if we can end and start the first half with the football, we're going to be in good shape. We need passing yards. These are our goals. We have a lot of receivers visiting today. Ikim Rhodes, Justin Lingard, uh, Kahi Kalani and Oke, Danny Pardula. Passing for over 250 yards is huge. The offense is going to be one-dimensional. Jesus, we're off to a great start. We're going to struggle today. But wins at this point, like we're not going to be bowl eligible, right? So wins, I hate to say it. Wins are less important than convincing some of these recruits that this is the right place to be. Quick throw to the outside. If our quarterback can hit these throws, certain receivers are actually able to catch. Clarence Johnson, as I talked about in the last game, is one of those guys. What are they doing? Some type of blitz? Ooh, I didn't like that. Didn't like anything there. I know we could throw the ball more down the field. I can't trust the accuracy. Like... Sometimes it's worth taking a chance, but I'm trying to get guaranteed yards most of the time, especially on first down. And that just is often going to work with a check down. And I know my impulse is going to be just, okay, we can scramble for it, scramble for it. I can't do that today. We got to pass the ball. Great block. And there goes Jimmy Ewing. Broken tackle. Jimmy Ewing for 26. I forgot what it was like to get a gain of over 20 yards in a play. And that's just a simple, I'd call it a check down. Wide open receiver. Don't try to do too much. Throw to the open guy. See what he can do after. And you know what? He makes a guy miss. He stiff arms for a couple extra. And now we're cooking a little bit. We're going deep. Davis cannot reel it in. Shocker. Antoine Davis, man, this guy, he caught the ball early on this season. Maybe he has a pair of broken hands. And you know what? With the rate he's dropping the ball, he better. Because there's no excuse for how bad he's been. And you know what? Troy Jones drops the ball religiously on plays like that. Maybe a screen will work. It actually does look pretty open. We need one block. We did not block the one guy we needed to block. It's going to be fourth and two. This is a great opening possession, though. And, of course, we're going to go for it. We could just try a screen to the other side. Now, the problem is, if this doesn't work, if they read the screen, it has no chance of working, right? And they read it fairly well. We're going to try to dive for it. Turnover on downs. Maybe comes up an inch short. 
They read it just enough. It's a little bit... It's a little bit of a bold call. And we're just not close enough to get there. As I mentioned, if they read it at all, we have no chance. Because there's only one read on the screen. There's really nothing else we can do. We don't end up scoring. But as far as yardage goes, good opening drive. And we're going to get destroyed today on the ground. And through the air. That's not new. I'm so excited to get some defensive recruits. That's why that's pretty much, you know, most of what I'm going for in this recruiting cycle. Is our offense is capable of doing some things well. Our defense is atrocious. So when we go after recruits like Alex Toure, a number of different corners, a big time linebacker, a bunch of defensive linemen. I'm trying to improve the entire defense as quickly as possible. It's not going to be one year. We're still going to be probably quite bad next year. But we're trying to put the pieces in place to be a better defense. Because if we can't get a stop, we are not going to beat anybody. Because I'm never going to be perfect on offense. I'm unlikely to score on every offensive possession. There are times when that happens down the line. We get so many great players. We create one of the best college football teams you've ever seen. You know, then we're capable of scoring a lot of the time. But right now... It's just not the case. Next year, it'll be better, but how much better? The year after that, better, but how much better? It takes a while to make, you know, an awesome, unstoppable team. Here's third and six. Wesley Price creeping up. It is a run. Broken tackle and great tackle as we get a stop on defense. Lamar Simmons with another tackle for loss. Had a couple against FSU. Coming up big with a play there, and it's fourth and seven, and a long field goal try for a college kicker. And we know it. What do college kickers do? Oh, they miss? Watch this. Good try, idiot. We get the football back. Here's a studio update. As Clemson has beat the FSU team that nearly uh, crushed our entire season. Walker, four touchdown game. Get me back in that left corner. All right, let's continue to try to pass the ball successfully. We're already probably at, what, 50 yards passing? It might actually even be more than that. 63. Okay. That's a really good start, especially when it's still in the first quarter. Oh, th dude, what a freak defensive end. You know, I know he didn't pick it off, but that kind of reminds me of a play. Some of you might remember this. It was the Alamo Bowl, Texas versus Colorado. And Alfred Collins makes this incredible, like, leaping, diving back interception, one-handed, essentially. And uh, I thought he was going to be a superstar. And he's kind of never quite lived up to expectations, unfortunately. But we'll see if he decides to come back to Texas. But uh, that was nearly what just happened. Thankfully, the pass was only batted down. We're going to go for it here. We're on the 40. We've seen what our punts are like. They're not good. To me, it's worth it to just try to go for it here. Do I trust Antoine Sims? I definitely don't trust him, but we're going to give him a shot. And when it's not one, it's the other. Dan Sims misses wildly. <laughs> I mean, Jesus, dude. You are a college quarterback. Barely. Trips right for Colorado State. I still expect this to be a run. Yeah. Yeah. There goes Pollard. Broken tackle. Touchdown saved by Smith, but it's first and goal for Colorado State. And yeah, this looks like it could be the first touchdown of the game. Again, obviously I'd like to win. Winning would be really nice, but those game goals are super important as well. Man, that is a touchdown. Our defense, man, they're just brutal. And our offense is not much better. I think slightly better. But, I mean, it's it's dumb and dumber. These guys suck. Okay. It's good in a way. It's also bad in a way. But we get a monster return from Steve Rivera. And we're already close to midfield. Get that block out in front. And Jones just does not have the speed to outrun the defender from behind. It's nine yards. Nine yards that in my head could have been like 60. Really thought that could have ended up being at least an opportunity for a touchdown there. We're rolling out. I see triangle. I, I just can't. I just can't. We still want to win. I got I to gotta stop trying to only pass. 
We still need to win. Or ideally, we would. All right, first and 10. Who wants to get open? I don't know why I think Antoine Davis is about to burn here. We're going to give him a chance. Go up and get it. Antoine Davis had it in his hands, and he can't catch it. Oh, this guy sucks. He's so bad. I mean, I, I don't know. Like, I don't know what I'm expecting from that. That's a great ball from Dan Sims, and it obviously amounts to nothing. We were not over the line there. That's just good offense. Third and two. Ah, I just threw it too early. Fourth and two. It didn't work last time. I'm trying it again. We've got a screen, but we have some other options potentially here. And that's wide open. It's Ashley! I love this guy. He gets about, on average, maybe half or like maybe one touch a game. But I'm telling you, he always makes the most of them. Tyler Ashley is amazing. Love that guy. Jesus. I know that up the seam was open. I just don't think we could have hit it. Not saying what I decided was better, but that's just why it happened. Try that. Dude, this guy doesn't drop the ball. Clarence Johnson, team MVP. This guy's a beast. We are driving. Also, where's Troy Jones? As Anthony Holmes gets blasted for just a yard. Just seven yards on three catches so far. Although, Dan Sims, and that's a, there's your answer. Dan Sims having a decent game. Elbow bursitis for Troy Jones. He's out for the game. Last play of the first quarter. Almost looked like a fumble. Third and nine. Have to get into the end zone here. The routes are not going to help us do that. Although Ewing! First and goal, Jimmy Ewing! What a catch over the middle. And it was the burst to turn up field and dive toward the end zone. Obviously ends up being a nose of the football away. But the fact that we were actually able to get a first down there was surprising in itself. Slant, maybe, yeah, hits Holmes in the hands, he doesn't catch it. We could try it again, you know. I don't love it, I, I see it. Let's just take the touchdown. Sims, short. Ah, we're close, we just can't get in there. All right, Tyler Ashley, you got a job to do. Block the nickel. Read option, Sims broken tackle, diving touchdown, Dan Sims. Seven up in Riverside. Let's go. Let's go, Dan. That's a lot of heart. Boy, does he suck, but he's got heart. Our first touchdown in a long time. Gotta love it. We are all tied up. What a drive. A stop here would be so awesome. How do we make that happen? That's good defense. I'll tell you what. I don't like when we come out with three down linemen. I want to stop doing that. It's still going to happen sometimes, and I know it makes sense to get more guys, more DBs on the field. But with our personnel, I just don't like it. I like multiple defensive linemen, multiple linebackers, so that we're, you know, given a slightly better chance to stop the run, and we struggle anyway. But I feel like having more bodies out there just makes sense. Quarterback keeps it. Rivera can't make the tackle. Burton can't make the tackle. Wesley Price does. And Wesley Price again on Josh Neal. There's your receipt. Price cashing checks, breaking necks. To run. Oh, you've got to make that tackle. Hood, please. All right. It's not a first down at least. Damn. Big opportunity for a TFL there. Can't get it done. It's third and two. I'd love if they ran the ball here. Because we got, you know, kind of like a little run blitz working. Just don't pass it. I'm almost run committing with what we're doing with Price here. We're on the running back now. And they're going to pass. Price up the middle. Ball comes loose. It's recovered by Smith. Wesley Price again. Check, please. Price shooting up the middle. I think right through the A-gap there. Destroys the quarterback. Football comes loose. And then Smith is right there to dive on it. Big turnover. The first one we've had in a while. Five wide going out of empty is just disgusting with our team. 
But sometimes you gotta try it. And these defensive linemen are just playing coverage. Stop that, please. All right, third and five. We gotta capitalize here. Antoine Davis makes a catch, I don't believe it. 10 yard pickup for Antoine Davis. Yeah, I mean, I'm as shocked as you are. Maybe more. We're at 131 yards passing the first half. I'd love to get up to 150 before we end. And I think that's gonna be highly likely. Nice broken tackle from Holmes. He's still on his feet, still going. And it's gonna be Anthony Holmes for the score. Anthony Holmes. What an individual effort. We dialed up the screen. He's replacing the injured Troy Jones as RB1 right now. And he's making plays. And look at the effort to stay on his feet after getting tripped up. And the speed to outrun the Rams into the end zone. And we take the lead. Gonna be hopefully 14-7. And it is. Oh man. December 1st and I'm already in the Christmas spirit. Rudolph the red-nosed reindeer over here. Listen, I don't know what happens when I record Falcons franchise, when I record Riverside Royals Dynasty. My nose gets so itchy. It's got to be because I'm more animated, but I, that doesn't make any sense. So I, I itch it because it's so itchy. Ooh, nice little penalty. Clipping. And then it gets so red. It doesn't happen when I record rebuilds or mock drafts, typically. Some, uh, actually, it has before. I put some lotion on it, so hopefully it's going to go down and stop itching like crazy. But it's unreal. I know it looks insane. Lamar Simmons is a beast. Two TFLs now. Uh, I wish it would stop happening. Step out of bounds. Just step out of bounds. Ah! Nearly. Third and six. Now, this is three down linemen. I can see this working out, though. Try to cover everybody. Moses! Putting the fear of God into Colt Moore! It's going to be fourth and one, and Colorado State will punt. I hope this is actually a punt, because if so, that's a huge stop. It is, and let's get a big return here. We're on really good pace for the yardage. I'm trying to run up the score at this point. If we can get it 21-7, obviously they get the football to start the second half. I don't know that this is going to be a three and a half minute drive. It certainly could be. Going to continue to pass the ball. You know, dance with the one that brought you. And that's been passing the ball so far as we're not able to keep momentum there. And we lose two. Second and 12. They're blitzing, which is perfect against the screen for us. We get four back. It's going to be third and eight. Uh, we just don't have the speed. I mean, four down territory, I guess. That's open enough. Jones can't catch it. This is probably a punt. How do we play this? Two and a half minutes though. No, I'm going to go for it. Or at least see what they line up in. And then make an adjustment if I don't like it. But I do kind of like this. I'm hoping that that curl from Antoine Davis gets open. Could have always called a timeout. It's not open. They played it. They're kind of playing the scramble as well. They just played great defense. I'm not even sure if the punt netted us any total yards like uh like forcing a punt i should say i don't know if we did anything with it at all i don't even think we got a yard we might have lost one in the end it's a pass we're all over it don't be in bounds thank you our dbs are so bad they're celebrating like they're mvp candidates somehow at corner not a thing in it, the heisman thorpe award winner all right there you go they stink what is the pass button? All right. We're going to pass commit. Check down. Step out of bounds. Thank you. Give me the football back. Our defense has somehow come to play. I love it. And they're not even going to let this tick down. Should be good field position for us as well. I think that's probably going to be somewhere around the 25 or 30. We have a chance here. We have a chance here. Now they're starting to defend our passing a little bit better. As Jimmy Ewing gets seven. So we're going to have to mix things up a little bit. Getting to 250 could prove to be a little bit difficult. I know it seems like we're really close. At 172 yards here in the first half. We're going deep. I mean, there were so many options. He's out of bounds. He's running out of bounds the entire time. <laughs> 
I mean, not only are they bad, they're also stupid. You can't be both. Yet, they managed to be both. Third and three. Running back, Anthony Holmes, first down. And he didn't fumble. Sometimes when they get stood up like that, they do tend to fumble. Not Anthony Holmes, though. All right, just over a minute and 15 seconds here. See if we can make a play. Work three. Anthony Holmes. I mean, I'll take seven yards every time like that. They don't have an answer for the mesh that includes the running back. They don't have an answer for it. Clock's going to stop momentarily while the ball is spotted. Second and ten. I'm taking a shot to Clarence Johnson. It's a bullet! Clarence Johnson, of course, going to make the catch. Dan Sims throws a wobbler, but Clarence Johnson, hit, I mean, it hits him right in the hands. It's a, it's a great pass directionally. Just didn't look pretty, but it didn't have to. He threw a bullet, and it got the job done. 35 seconds to play. Check down. Dropped. At this point, I, I can safely say we're going to get pretty close to 250 if we don't hit it. I think we're going to be there. We can afford to do a little bit more things on offense, and that includes running the ball. I saw Antoine Davis in the end zone. There is no chance for making that throw. I know Square was open. There's no chance. I wish. I really do. No chance. 20 seconds. We're saving our timeout so far. Probably we'll call one after this play. Wide open. We'll take it. Timeout. Holmes with a catch. Oh my goodness. We just challenged him and the defender didn't come up with the ball. That was really, really close to being really bad, but another bullet and another great result. I mean, the middle looks so open. If I could just somehow run right up the middle, we got it. Dan Sims with another rushing touchdown. The guy's dynamic. I mean, this is the best game of his career and it's probably not even close. And you know what's interesting about that? We're without Troy Jones, the usual safety net. We are forcing ourselves to throw the ball, which we never do. And we're finding as much success as we found the entire series. 21 points in the first half and our defense is playing well. This is a great game. That just goes to show you. And same sliders too, obviously, as the Florida State game. It's just... Depending on who you play, depending on the day, you can get slaughtered or, you know, play some of the best football you've ever played. We're one in seven, playing a lot better than that right now. And we're bringing it to an old rival, Colorado State. Second half starts now. Thank you again to Underdog Fantasy for sponsoring this video. Code Bengal, get you a deposit match first time up to $100. Meaning if you put in 100, bu 100 bucks, they will give you $100 free to play with. All right, defense, come on. That's a that's a not so great start. Got a little aggressive there. A little over aggressive, I should say. This looks like a run. I mean, it might not be, but yeah, it does look like a run. And that's been something that's worked for them today. Jason Pollard averaging nearly eight yards per carry gets eight there. Here's the thing is that's fine if he averages eight yards per carry obviously it's not great but all it takes is back-to-back -back runs of being you know three or four yards a carry that's what a great tackle by moss and um you know they punt that's all it is they're gonna pass the ball that's just wide open yeah i've run that play a hundred times at least we have a lead right now though Makes me feel a whole lot better than I would have otherwise. And the quarterback just doesn't ever pitch the ball. Had plenty of time to do so. Chose not to. Only gets four. I love Wesley Price in a hook zone here. Our best player dropping right over the middle of the field to make plays. And uh, he didn't do any of those things. The running back was wide open. I did not run with him. So there were a lot of options on that play for success. More blitzing. That's what's going to take us to the promised land. That could be a touchdown. Big hit from Price. First and goal, though. Please run the ball. Don't pass. They're passing, and it's a touchdown. <laughs> I mean, there were, again, a billion options. Dan Sims at 236 yards passing right now. A couple of things need to happen. We read the blitz there, which is nice. Hit the check down. There's Jones. 
And it's Steven Jones for a nice catch and run. We need to score again. We need to take more time off the clock. I'm dangerously close to going into two clock mode. And we're just one yard away from 250, by the way. Safety's going to creep up. Which means Holmes could be wide open out of the backfield. And that's exactly what happens. And we hit him! Big block! No! I thought he was going to get blocked and the other one was going to come through. No! Would have been an even bigger play, but it's the 14th catch. A new school record. Think about everybody at Riverside. Luke Tucker, the receiver. Richie Owens was not this series. It was uh, Michael Ham. excuse me. Reggie Gonzalez even out of the backfield. Phil Triplett. None of them ever caught the ball 14 times in a game. And now the backup running back. Jesus. The backup running back now has a school record. That is absurd. Second and nine. We're just going to scramble here. We knew we were going to take a shot. I wish I could tell my offensive line, hey, I'm going to scramble. Go block him. We need Anthony Holmes back in the game. That much is clear. Here's third and eight. Trusting the curl. He was supposed to run a curl. I swear I put him on a curl. He had no interest in working back to the football. Absolutely none. Did I throw the ball a touch early? I actually don't think so. Just uh, Antoine Davis being an idiot, I guess. Or maybe I didn't do the uh, hot route correct. Correctly. And that is a turnover. That was a weird possession. And you know what? Colorado State's going to make us pay. And I think there's a pretty good chance to come away with the tie after this, after this drive. However, our defense, and Lamar Simmons in particular, these guys are capable of making enough plays to get us off the field, get our offense back on. Dude, Lamar Simmons sets the edge as well as anyone I've ever seen. <laughs> he sucks, but or he maybe he doesn't actually. The team sucks around him. He's making all sorts of plays. We just can't make a play on that. Third and one. I you know I, I feel like this is a run, but they're showing pass. It is going to be a pass. Pretty good defense, but they convert. You know what? It all starts with a tackle for loss. That's how we get punts. We blitz heavy, we get a TFL, and then they're kind of in a tough spot. Neal under pressure, will scramble, Burton with the big tackle. Neal only gets one, maybe one and a half or two. I'm going to call it third and four. This is a got to have it down. We're going to blitz. They could run here. I would appreciate if they did that, I think. We're going to have man coverage, no safety help. It is a run. And it's a big one. It is a big one. It's going to be a touchdown. That's where maybe a safety would make that play over the top. Brandon Miller will tie things up for Colorado State as our lead has slipped away. And you know what part of it is? Anthony Holmes was not on the field for a lot of that last drive. And he's been our X Factor today. No way around it. And when you take what could be our best player off the field... And Dan Sims has played well, too. Don't get me wrong, but he's played well partly because of Anthony Holmes. When you take that guy off the field, you lose a lot of what has made us great today. Nice catch, idiot. I hate him. Get him off the field. Read option. Quarterback keeper. We're going to slide in front. A little conservative, but we need our yards. This is a huge third and two. It's massive. We're looking to scramble. Setting our feet, throwing, finding Holmes! Anthony Holmes again! I knew I believed in this guy. His 15th catch now for 128 yards. And that actually breaks the school record, excuse me. That breaks the record. It was tied before. Now he stands alone. There's Gordon. Oh, a broken tackle there would have been huge. Dan Sims is 8 yards from 300. Which I never thought I would say. You got to make somebody miss, Gordon. He can't do it. That's the end of the third quarter. That was his third catch of the game, by the way, for a total of zero yards. It's 21-21. It's been a good game so far. Obviously, we want to come away with that win, though. You know, we've played well enough to get it, but we've fallen apart here in the second half a little bit. 
and we can't hit Clarence Johnson. Uh, I knew we weren't going to be able to, and I just did it anyway, and I can't bring myself to punt. Not from this area of the field, even on fourth and very long. Gotta have it. Went to the running back. It's just, you're hoping for something, some type of luck. Didn't get it. I looked at the curl, maybe should have thrown to it. Just didn't like it quite enough. And this is going to be a huge play. Get out of bounds. Please get out of bounds. And Colorado State is on the verge of taking the lead here. Oh, and they're going to pass. That's wide open. Bruce, sir, I need a play. I don't even know who you are. But he saves a touchdown. If we can hold them to three, it doesn't honestly change a, uh, change a ton because we still need a touchdown anyway. We can't really kick field goals from any range. But it would make me feel better with a touchdown taking the lead, which I think we are capable of. We've shown that we can do it. Get up the field, Price. Nice tackle. Brandon Miller loses three. Although losing three was a lot better than the time he lost his nine. You'll never guess who was in on the TFL, by the way. You'll never guess. Big number 98, Lamar Simmons. He's been a beast for us today. We're going to pass him in on third and 11. Might show blitz and then get out of it. Throw over the middle, wide open, Tatum, touchdown. Or nearly. First and goal from the one. 17 yard pickup. It's so frustrating to be in that spot. Third and long, we just allow it easily. Linebacker gets no depth. What do we do? We're going to run commit middle. They've passed a lot in this spot. But we got to pick one, and it's easier to stop the run. Good read. Smith is so bad. Uh, all these guys suck. I just don't like the amount of time left in this game either. Six and a half minutes. I feel like if we score, we're going to leave them like two minutes on the clock, and that's going to be enough to lose. And if we don't score, I feel like it, it's going to take two minutes. And then I think four minutes is easy for them to just chew off the clock and end the game. I don't love anything about it. They have scored three touchdowns to our zero here in the second half, and that's just simply not good enough. All right, they blitz, they brought everybody up for a blitz. We're going to get out of that look. We're going to quickly throw it. You got to stay in, Steven, please. Third and one. Read option feels dangerous. We're going to go to it, and we're just going to give it to the running back. Anthony Holmes picks up the first. Five and a half minutes to play. Originally, that was going to be a screen. Which we could try again. I just didn't like how they brought everybody up against it. You know, even if they're blitzing, if they read it and get out of that blitz, we're losing yards no matter what. As Holmes somehow does not lose yards in that screen and gets three. That's a great effort. His 16th catch. We've thrown the ball almost 60 times. Jimmy Gordon finally going to get over that zero yard number. His fourth catch goes for eight yards. He's up to eight yards total. 16 first downs in this game. That safety's coming up. We need you to leak out. Get open. Get up the field, too, would be sweet. There's Dan Sims. All right, that's okay. 350 offensive yards for us as well. Anthony Holmes with space. Another first down. How many total yards is he sitting on? He's got only 19 yards rushing. Might have to give him the football more. Interesting. He's had a, he's had a great game. He's had a great game. Probably near 150 total yards. Third and five. Get open. Yes. There goes Smith. Smith diving. Touchdown. John Smith for 28. Big time score. Oh my goodness, Dan Sims. Threw a wobbler, but it got there. And we got a block. John Smith turned up the field. And it looks like we're about to tie things up at 28. But four minutes to play now. State has a real good opportunity to take the lead. We're going to need to stop. Yeah, look at that, man. Punt, half ended, three straight touchdowns. Our second half defense has not been the same. And I'm trying to find that recipe of what was successful. And we're struggling to find it right now. We are struggling to find it. 
Receiver comes in motion. Actually, maybe even the tight end. We're off sides there for a second. It's actually going to be a run. Just fill up space. Blah, please, Dwayne Wade. I just spit. I went blah. <laughs> He had an opportunity for a pick. Oh my goodness, Dwayne. He threw it right to you. Oh, huge tackle. Are you kidding me, Lamar Simmons? What a play. Lamar Simmons, man. I mean, this guy's unbelievable. Fourth and one. Colorado State on to punt. And they're going to waste every second. But as long as they're punting, which is a... It's a pussy punt, let's be honest. I, I gotta call it what it is. This is the zero gut punt of the century. Tie game, uh, you, okay, you trust your defense. We struggled to score in the second half. It is fourth and one from midfield. You need one yard to probably win the game, and they punt. I love it. That's what we're we talked earlier about my inability to win the game last week, last episode, two weeks ago, I should say. It's playing to win or playing not to lose. And they're playing not to lose. And when you play not to lose, you oftentimes find yourself the loser. We're going to read option to Clarence Johnson. Or, that seems insane. We're going to give it to him. There's the big tight end. Clarence Johnson gets 11. Of course, no two minute warning in college football. So we are under two. We're going to roll out. Dan Sims just take off for it. There goes Dan Sims sliding. Gets the first. Minute 30 to play. Running back wide open. It's Anthony Holmes. That's back-to-back -back first downs. Look at all our backups in. Kirby, Gordon, John Smith. I mean, we have Clarence Johnson playing outside receiver. And look at Dan Sims with the power. He wants it. He wants it badly. Oh my goodness. Second and two. One minute to play. Let's just roll out. Let's make it happen. Sims sliding first down. We can go hurry up here. Keep them on their toes. I'm very afraid of a fumble. We're not in the field goal range yet. I wish we were. So we really need to get to the goal line. Essentially. That's open. It's Gordon. Gordon! Gets the first down. 45 seconds to go. We need to get right on that goal line if we're going to have a chance to hit a field goal. They basically think this is field goal range for us, but I, I don't know if I agree. Read option. Quarterback keeps. Dan Sims broken tackle. Dan Sims stiff arming. Dan Sims gets four of the toughest yards he'll ever have to get. He's up to 69 on the game. Nice. 25 seconds. All right. Gordon stays in the game. We're going to go read option. Dan Sims, keeper. Dan Sims falling for it. We're going to call a timeout on third and six. And we're going to feed the fullback. Tyler Ashley. Gordon going to go in motion. Just go straight up the gut. Ashley with power. But is stopped. It's fourth and five. Ten seconds on the game clock. This is the game. This is the game. We're going to call a timeout with three seconds. They might ice us. This is the game. That's all I got to say. We are ice. And there, where's the penalty? Our center, our long snapper was just tackled. There was no play. That's an automatic first down. Not that it matters. Oh my goodness. I don't know if this is lined up at all. An ice kick for the win. This is a big moment. Our kicker's terrible. Can he be the hero? Kick up. Down the middle! And good! Triple zeros on the clock! Our kicker's done the impossible! A short field goal for the win! Un- Believable. 31 28 is your final. Oh my god. The recruits got to see a great one. Dan Sims throws for 364, goes for over 400 total yards, four total touchdowns. 
This is what college football is all about. We improved to 2-7. and seven, And we beat Colorado State, which I always enjoy. I hate this team. I hate them. Anthony Holmes has the game of a lifetime. Dan Sims has the game of a lifetime. We blew a big second half lead and we came back to win and we win in the most unlikely of ways. A field goal. That's not our team. That's not our game, but we did it. We come out on top. What a win. Dan Sims goes 40 of 62 for 364, two touchdowns, was sacked, had a great game mostly. Rushing, Dan Sims goes 15 of 69, two touchdowns, very nice performance. Anthony Holmes only got three carries, but had like 20-something total touches, which was insane. Clarence at, or Johnson's going to be a player. Love that. 17 catches for 142 yards and a touchdown for Anthony Holmes. Long of 32. I'm losing my voice. This is so crazy. What a game. Jimmy Ewing, 43 yards. Clarence Johnson, 49. John Smith, the redshirt freshman from Hawaii, had a touchdown. And then defensively, Wesley Bryce, seven tackles, one for loss. Three TFLs for Lamar Simmons. He's the best player of all time. I don't know why he's so good. He's a defensive end at 299. He's a great run stopper. No pass rush, but great run stopper. Wesley Price with that sack. No interceptions, although one bounced right off the hands of Dwayne Wade. What a game. Force fumble by Price, of course, recovered by Brian Smith. What a game. And I am going to throw those points back on Danny Pardula. And uh, we're going to see if we can bring in two quarterbacks. Week 12 is at Kentucky. Week 14 is at ranked Purdue. And that is our season after that. So... Uh, this was a huge win. Final chance for our recruits to visit for an actual game. Got those game goals accomplished. It was a tremendous performance. Uh, one of the best of the series. And that includes all the episodes of this entire playlist, which is probably 70 or 80 episodes deep, everything considered. When we were a powerhouse, when we were not a powerhouse, which is now. And um, it was a great game, man. It was a great game. Now, these recruits can still visit. They're just not going to be there for a game week. Just going to see campus, whatever. But um, great game, all things considered. So now we have a huge lead on Justin Lingard. He got a ton of points for coming up to campus. 400, or down, I guess. 470 total points. Great stuff. We met at least one of his game goals, not the other, unfortunately. But, um... Big time stuff. Alex Toure is probably very close to committing as well, but Lingard's right there. Leading on Delando Ross, which is nice. Huge points for the win. We actually met a game goal as well defensively, which seems insane, but that's very nice. Linwood Tapley, we're still looking really good on. That's the one guy that we really, really want and we're probably going to end up getting. Some of these other guys like Delando Ross could be very difficult, but a lot of these quarterback commits are potentially right there. Danny Pardula, we've taken the lead on. Huge, huge visit. Stanford drops a ton. We jump up a bunch. Met both game goals. 620 points for that. 100 for the complimentary visits. 200 for the base visit score. This was huge to secure a quarterback for next season. Now, I'm actually really worried about Levert Abraham going to Utah. We closed the gap a little bit, but... He has a visit to Utah week 13. I don't like it. Do not like it. And he's a good player too. This would be a frustrating one to lose. I've been locked out on a couple of players, which is okay. You know, I'm, I'm still trying to figure out exactly how we want to do this. I think at this point, we've got the guys we're going after. It's pretty late in the cycle to really be going after anybody else. You know, I could look on the board... See if, see if there's anybody. We're wasting points on Cole Graham. We're just not going to have a kicker or punter next year. It's just going to be something we focus on for the future. But, um, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens. We got some points. We just have a couple of corners really interested in coming to Riverside. Another player from Alaska. Yes, I don't know why people keep trying to correct me. AK is not Arkansas. It's Alaska, I can promise you. Look it up. But uh, another guy from Alaska, 
And he wants to be here. I haven't even been recruiting him. That's just free. De Yunkria Grayer. Okay, De Yunkria. Interesting. Uh, he wants to be royal as well, so we'll add him. Seems like we're going to have no shortage of corners that want to be royals, but the offensive line is really what I'm looking at right now. And the offensive line, unfortunately, does not have very many good players. But all these corners want to end up being royals. Guys I haven't even looked at. And I've looked at some of them, like Brandon Tate, who's minus 18. We'll find out if any of these guys can play. Um, and I'm sure a lot of them can't. Although, some of them can. 92 speed from DeYunkria Grayer, who again, wants to be here. I mean, Miami of Ohio gaining on us, but we weren't even in on the commitment until moments ago. The recruitment, I should say. That's another big bust. We, dude, we need gems. Typically, you know, guys are uh, not going to be at this point. And we'll schedule some other recruits for some of these buys. We have so many ready. Try to just get some complimentary visits going. And this is going to be big for Miles Horst. This is maybe the number one guy. I haven't really talked about him too much. But Miles Horst, I really, really want. Middle linebacker. Michigan's going after him a little bit. Not really. They, I don't even know if they've offered a scholarship. They haven't. But we finally have the lead on Miles Horst. He's got 85 speed, 80 tackle, 84 finesse moves. There's something big here with Miles Horst. He looks really good. Ooh, minus 24 bust. A lot of these players are really bad. Oh, that's a big gem though. Matt McDonald is an athlete, 71 speed, 89 acceleration. Can you block? He's got 88 pursuit, 82 hit power, 76 tackle. Finesse moves is an 85. Power moves at 78. Block shedding 71. We really found something with Matt McDonald. Junior college transfer, so we only have him for, you know, a couple of years. But if we can get in on this recruitment, we could be getting a really good player. Might not be able to be anywhere close, but we might give it a shot. That's it for this episode. It was certainly a fun one. Just two more games the rest of the season. Kentucky and Purdue. And uh, then we're off to the offseason, which is just trying to secure our recruits and advancing to season two of the reboot. So thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Take it easy.